Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Bite Sized Politics. Today, we've got a juicy scoop for you Hunter Biden's wild legal roller coaster. So grab your popcorn and let's dive right in. Now, picture this Hunter Biden, son of our very own President Joe Biden, found himself smack dab in the middle of a federal investigation lead by Trump appointed U.S. Attorney in Delaware, David C. Weiss. Yep, you heard it right, the big leagues. It all started back in 2018 and continued into a five-year investigation. Hunter was accused of playing hide-and-seek with his federal income tax payments stemming from his lucrative consulting work on behalf of companies in Ukraine and China during a period when he was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And how much are we talking here? Over a hundred grand. Wow. But wait, there's more. The gun saga? Picture Hunter strolling into a Delaware gun shop feeling like Rambo. But hold up. When buying a gun from a licensed dealer, you gotta pass a background check using Form 4473 to be precise. Hunter checked a box that said he wasn't an unlawful user of, or addicted to, marijuana or any other controlled substance. Unfortunately for Hunter, he had a reputation for such things. Hunter's response raised some eyebrows, and BAM! Law enforcement and federal authorities zeroed in. So, apart from the financial roller coaster and gun charge, some Republicans decided to spice things up. Yep. We're talking explicit images linked to Hunter Biden. Arizona State Senator Wendy Rogers went all in, hitting the retweet button. She retweeted footage of the first son to her 300,000 followers on Twitter, which included several X-rated images, but later claimed she didn't realize the tweet contained the images. Yeah, right. Marjorie Taylor Greene decided to get in on the X-rated game and held up posters featuring blown-up photos of Biden nude and engaging in sexual activities in a House Oversight Committee hearing, claiming it was evidence that he was paying for sex and listing those payments as tax write-offs. Oh, the scandal. Now, the courtroom plea deal showdown. While some Republicans criticized aspects of the plea deal pointing to a perceived double standard in the justice system— Congressional investigators believed that President Biden might have closer ties to Hunter's businesses than previously disclosed. The judge wasn't buying what they were selling either. The plea deal that was supposed to end the five-year investigation was thrown out over concerns of discrepancies in the interpretation of the plea, disputes, and a tug-of-war over immunity. Oh my. A major point of contention was how much immunity the plea deal would prevent Biden from future prosecution. Defense attorneys believed it would protect him from any future federal indictments related to his business dealings, but federal prosecutors disagreed. So, what's the verdict? The plea deal's out the window, folks. The legal drama continues, and we might just be in for a brand new agreement or an epic trial. It doesn't stop there. The decision by Biden's lawyer, Christopher J. Clark, is the latest development in the long-running negotiation, which has now devolved into a fight between the Justice Department and Mr. Biden, saying that he intends to step down and testify as a witness on behalf of the president's son. The story has more twists and turns than a soap opera. And that's the tea on Hunter Biden's legal roller coaster. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share this video, and spill the tea in the comments below. Until next time, this is Bite Size Politics signing off.